Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Natalia Barina, and I'm an AI product lead at Facebook, where I support a team of about 50 engineers, PMs, and designers. I'm excited to bring you the event today. So let's talk about how to be an AI product manager. Why are we here today? Well, AI is making consequential decisions at an unprecedented scale. In the last decade, AI has become ubiquitous, driving increasingly complex and consequential decisions like credit approvals, college admissions, courtroom bail decisions, etc. AI products are automated systems that learn from data to make user-facing decisions. Machine learning gives computer systems the ability to learn by being trained on existing data. After training, the system can make predictions or deliver other results based on data it hasn't seen before. Some examples of AI today that we don't think about or we don't notice, but spam filtering in your email box, Google searches, uh, self-driving cars, of course, this one is visible if you see them, um, driving around if you happen to be in an area where they have them. Um, there's also systems that use deep learning to infer how distracted or, or tired drivers are. There's so many more. One of my favorites is the estimation of house prices. Because all technologies are touched by AI, soon every PM will be an AI PM. This is really impossible to escape. We will all need to understand AI because it's becoming so omnipresent. So let's talk about what is the role of an AI product manager? What is an AI product manager and what do we do? Well, an AI product manager works to envision and realize impactful AI solutions for a company's most important business problems. Um, and the way to do this is to first and foremost, understand what are the most important business problems that AI can solve. AI is not always appropriate in all situations. Um, secondly, it's to identify and what are prioritize the right set of problems and develop a vision strategy and roadmap. So this is really getting into what it is that you, you need to do. And then third, as all product managers, our job is to make it happen. Now there are different types of AI product managers. Um, there are pro AI product managers who work specifically on products and need to have um, a very, very strong understanding of what the product does in order to use AI to supercharge that specific product. Um, there are AI product managers who work on a platform, so they work on developer tools and infrastructure in order to build AI. There are AI product managers who work on research, so this is working with AI researchers to bring research breakthroughs to production. Typically, these are um, product managers in bigger companies where there's a whole department that just focuses on research. And then finally, um, there are uh, product managers who focus on building AI responsibly. Although building AI responsibly has to be everyone's responsibility. But building AI responsibly, what does that mean? Ensuring that AI is fair, private, robust, explainable, and then there is accountability um, to people who use the AI. How is product management different uh, in AI than for other, um, for regular software? Well, let's talk about this. This is a really interesting one. Um, AI software development is probabilistic. So this is the biggest difference between traditional AI, traditional and AI tech products. Machine learning shifts engineering from a deterministic process to a probabilistic one. This means that instead of writing code with hard-coded uh, hard algorithms and rules, 
They always behave in a predictable manner. Um, ML engineers collect a large number of examples of input in output pairs and use them as training data for, for their models. With machine learning, um, we often get a system that is statistically more accurate than simpler techniques, but with a trade-off that some small percentage of model predictions would always be incorrect, sometimes in ways that are hard to understand. Um, this is why it's, it's sometimes hard for, for people to make that shift. It's, it's a very different way of building products. Let's talk about practical skills for AI product managers. What is it that you need to, uh, what kind of skills do you need to build if, in order to become an AI product manager? Well, as with um, all, all uh, product managers, a PM must determine what is the desired outcome, how that outcome will be delivered, and how the product will be used before starting the process of building, which every time you start, it's a process that's expensive um, and it's an investment. So at the very beginning, in the ideation phase, AI product managers should be able to use the same rapid innovation tools that uh, design experts use, including UX, mockups, wireframes, user surveys. Um, at this stage, it's really critical to frame the problem or the opportunity that the product addresses. There's sort of different categories of problems that ML can um, can solve in their ranking, recommendation, classification, regression, clustering, anomaly detection, etc. cetera. Um, it is imperative that every AI PM should understand the AI product pipeline. And what does this mean? Well, you need to build an AI product, you need data, you need a model, you need serving infrastructure, and you have to experiment until AI works and gives you the outcomes that, um, that are satisfactory. In reality, there are many candidate models uh, that are created during the development process. But basically, the AI life cycle is uh, this diagram I have here, it's data and training, design and development, validation and testing is, is important, um, approval to deploy, and then finally, you have to have monitoring and optimization to ensure that even when it's built and um, it's out there in the wild, things change. And so it's important to monitor the system for, for quality continuously. With great power comes great responsibility. So AI supercharges technology products and, and it, it's extremely powerful new technology. And here I'm borrowing from, from Spider-Man, though this actually goes way back to antiquity. Um, we as AI product managers have to understand that AI is so powerful that we have to really think about the responsibility that comes with developing such products. In medicine, there's the Hippocratic Oath stating first do no harm. Likewise, we as AI practitioners should, as a starting point, not harm our, our users and customers. What do I mean by that? Well. Unless carefully designed and optimized, AI can cause unintended consequences. AI gets better uh, with more data, but data encodes human and societal biases. Some examples are facial recognition that cannot recognize darker skinned faces, AI that inadvertently recommends high paying jobs to men and low paying jobs to women, etc. There, there are so, so many ways that AI can go wrong. Let's get a little bit more specific about areas for responsible AI development and what you should think about when you're building AI. Oops. Um, so first and foremost, uh, by the way, these are not in any particular order, so I, so I shouldn't say first and foremost, but AI, you have to make sure that AI is fair and it does not have bias so that it's built in a way that's 
ethical and, and inclusive. Secondly, it's important to preserve people's privacy when you're building AI and to secure, secure against attacks. Um, there's some really interesting ways that AI can be tricked uh, by in, in image recognition, for example, where you just do a little bit of manipulation um, of an image and it completely can break the algorithm. So it's very important to think about the adversarial aspects um, when building AI. Uh, AI should be transparent. So it should, it, we should be able to understand the why behind the AI and why it makes certain decisions. Um, this is especially important when they are uh, high stakes use cases that impact people's lives. Um, excuse me. All right. Um, AI must be accountable. So there must be checks and balances, validation and compliance, and be able to, to uh, really be, have human oversight. And then finally, AI should be built in a way that is reliable. So you have uh, continuous high performance, that the models don't decay, you detect data issues. This is where monitoring um, in our pipeline up there is really important. So how do you succeed as an AI PM? Um, what, what are, how, how, do you, um, how do you make this work? It's hard. Um, the most important thing is to be able to identify the right problems and the right solutions for them. And the way to do that is to deeply understand what are the problems um, the AI can can solve uh, for for people who use it. Uh, secondly, you have to internalize business objectives. Um, so you have to understand what is what is really the point of your business and how you can support the business with AI. Remember, you have to supercharge the business with AI. You have to understand what is the technology, what it can and can't do. AI is not suitable in all cases. It is not a silver bullet. And then as an AI product manager, you have to understand the potential harms of this powerful technology. You have to align and track, align on and track the right metrics. Um, Actually, coming up with the right metrics is not trivial. It, it's oftentimes difficult for a business to define and agree on metrics. AI should support business metrics and should show how it makes an impact to the business. Um, of course, the worst case scenario is that there aren't any business metrics or that sometimes what you see is there are business metrics and then there are AI metrics and they are in no way connected and it's very difficult. Uh, to, to, to see how they work with each other. So all AI should ladder up to the greater uh, business goals. And to, to get there, you have to work with all stakeholders, but especially leadership, to design and align on appropriate metrics before building your AI products. Without clarity in metrics, it's impossible to be successful. And how do you do this? We could, we could have a whole session on this. It is not straightforward and it is highly dependent on what kind of AI you're building and what kind of a product you are supporting. Um, as an AI PM, it's really important to foster an experimental culture. So part of an AI product manager's job is helping the organization build the culture it needs to succeed with AI. Because it's so different from traditional software development where the risks are more or less well-known and predictable, AI really rewards people and companies that are willing to take intelligent risks. Um, and, and for this, you have to be willing to fail. Um, everything will not work, but it is important to document the lessons and to keep iterating. Machine learning gives companies real competitive advantages in prediction, planning, sales, and almost every aspect of this business. However, even simple machine learning projects can be difficult and building AI is much harder than most people realize. Um, 
there's there's some data to show from from VentureBeat. Uh, VentureBeat claims that 87% of machine learning products never make it into production. And Harvard Business Review says that the first wave of corporate AI is bound to fail. So machine learning is not a silver bullet. Um, the ability to make decisions based on data is uh, a prerequisite for an experimental culture. Um, and measurement-obsessed companies, every part of their product experience is quantified and adjusted to optimize user experience. Um, so you have to start simple, get early wins. Wow, I am getting apologies about that. Um, start simple, get early wins, and slowly grow your AI suite of products. As a conclusion, I want to leave you with my three favorite PM pro tips. Um, and they are telling a good story is everything. Having and telling a good story is the most important thing you can do as a leader. Um, and this is, this is important for every PM, uh, but it's especially important for AI PMs because we have to make people understand what it is that we do. Oftentimes it's very technical, it's hard to explain. Um, second, uh, one of the things that I have been implementing for some time in my career is each half I have a written plan for beginning at, at each uh, a beginning of each half, and I have a written plan for how next six months will go. I share this with leadership and colleagues, and it really helps keep me focused. I never take meetings that don't align with with my goals, and it, it it's a it's a good way to to really stay um, balanced and make sure you're doing the right things. And then finally, if you're starting a new job, one of the things I'd recommend is uh, Andrew Bosworth's uh, cold start algorithm. And this is a way that will help you ramp up faster than you ever have before. And it's basically saying, um, if you start a new job, schedule 30 minute meetings with key people and each 30 minute meeting should be you should introduce yourself, ask everything you need to know, um, take copious notes, and then ask who else you should talk to. It's pretty simple, but it's extremely effective. With that, I thank you so much for your time today. I enjoyed giving this presentation and sharing my experience in AI product management. Uh, should you like to, please reach out to me on Twitter. This is my Twitter handle. Thank you so much.